Today we're making three new Dollar Tree bee decor ideas. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a bee on the hive. We're gonna have some black paint, this little bee wreath form that came from Dollar Tree. Here is the tag information in case you are looking for those. We're going to use some of these cork foam bottoms and here's the information for these and we're going to use three of them. We're going to spray paint that bee, let it dry. I'm going to grab three pieces of whatever type of cardstock or yellow paper that you have and I like this with the dots. Peel the back off of this then you can just place it down on your paper. You can save a little space by putting it as close to the edge as possible. Then you have extra paper to use. We don't want to waste. Make sure that you press that down really well. You won't need any type of glue or adhesive because it does, uh, the paper does cling nicely to the adhesive that's already on this, uh, this little shape. So once you get it all trimmed out, it's going to look like this. And we're going to do each one of them. You can see they'll sit right together. We're going to glue them together on the back with these large popsicle sticks. We're going to use two on each side to connect these into this shape, almost like a little Mickey Mouse ears. Just three. You can use more if you would like, but I like these three for the shape that I'm going for. Now around the edges, you can go with a paint pen, a paint marker, and cover up that white. If you would like, you can also use black. Just be careful that you don't let it bleed onto your paper that you have there. Don't want to make a mess. Here is that black B now. Not sure why they made it red, but that's okay too. To each his own, right? So now to glue this frame down, I'm gonna use some E6000. You can also use a tiny bit of hot glue if you have a hot glue, like a detail gun. So I'm just gonna take this E6000 and put on the parts of the wreath frame that are going to be touching the, uh, the hive the little honeycomb hive underneath it. I'm just gonna put these on the sections that'll touch. Otherwise, you'll just be gluing it to your table. And be careful, because a little bit is probably gonna squish out around it once you get it set down. Put some weights on it and leave it until it dries. If you have a little bit of glue that's kind of squished out, we wanna keep this high-end looking. So grab a little stick and you can just remove it just like that. I've got some tiny beads that have some little kind of ridges in them. And I thought it would be cute to put those up here on the antenna. We're going to say that this little bee has already been dipped down into the flower and he's got a little bit of pollen right there. It fits perfectly on the wire. These are just some that um, I've had for a while. Not even really sure where I got them from, but you can use any kind of bead that you want. You could even use yellow beads if you have some. Kind of a golden yellow color, I guess. But don't worry, we'll paint these. We'll paint them later. See, I have a box of beads. I just collect them. And these are some half rounds, and I thought, you know, these would be cute to cover up where all of those little crossbars are, so you don't see those there. You could put them on the stinger. You can put them around the bottom. You could trim the entire thing out if you had enough. I didn't have enough to go all the way around. It would have also been really cute to go completely around the wings. But I didn't have enough of that, so I'm gonna decide how I want it. Then I'm gonna take those beads off after I get them positioned so I know I have enough. I'm gonna put those down on a paper and try to paint them a color very similar to our background. And so this sunflower yellow is my favorite yellow for crafting with. It's just a beautiful color and it matches that background really well. I'm gonna paint those, each one of them, and set them aside to let them dry. Then we're going to grab some of that same paint and a brush and go right over the little beads that are on the antenna. We've already got bees all over the place here. In fact, we've had bees, we've had uh, the carpenter bees are out, the bumblebees are out, honeybees are out. Yeah, they're everywhere already here because it's been unseasonably warm. Even for South Alabama, it's been very warm, like in the high 70s and in the 80s. I think yesterday, it was, I 
think the thermometer in my car was registering about 88. So that was kind of, kind of wild for a winter day, right? But that's okay because it was a beautiful day. It was sunny and beautiful and I was outdoors most of the day after I got my work done. So that was, that was great. So you see, I'm just kind of putting them here and there where there are edges and just spacing them out. And I really like this. Um, if you don't like the look of this, you don't have to do this. If you just have beads, maybe you could clip the wire and feed the beads through there. Um, that would be a lot more work, but if that's what you like, then go for it. So we'll just use hot glue to put down these little half rounds. And then we're going to make a hanger. So it's glued down on the little hive or the honeycomb. And I'm going to just make this little knot with a piece of extra jute scrap that I had and we're going to loop it over and pull it through and this will be our hanger. You can see it's going to hang nicely like that and then try to get it sort of in the center of the the little head there and just because I want it to be extra this is going to be a girl bee. This is going to be the queen bee so we're going to give her a little bow and we're going to put that right on top of her head and it's going to be so cute. This is just some thin black ribbon I have. You can use whatever you like. They have some really pretty bee ribbon at Dollar Tree if you wanted to use that, but I didn't think that my bee would be wearing a ribbon that had bees on it. I don't know. I mean, that's fine if that's what you like, but for me, it just, I don't know. I'm just going to use the black here. Very simple. It doesn't stand out like crazy. Just let you know that she's our girl bee. She's not a worker bee. She's sitting on her future babies. Okay, the next one is the bee life. We're going to use this wooden frame. It's a little bee already on the honeycomb. If you like that, you can use exactly that. But I found some thrifted fabric with bees. So I've matched up my sunflower yellow perfectly. I'm going to use a little scraper tool and and I'm um, gonna try to cut this out. I measured the bee against what was already on the frame. So if you wanna use what's already on the frame, you could paint it or grab some acrylic markers and color it the same way. What I really wanted was some detail for this project. So I'm going to use some Mod Podge and some cardstock. I'm gonna cut a piece out so that I can make this fabric a little bit thicker. So when you put it down on the Mod Podge, it gives it a thicker backing, makes it a little more um, sturdy and substantial. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just using a tiny foam brush here and it looks like I'm dipping a lot, but I'm using not a whole lot because um, you will, if you put too much on there, it'll get the paper so damp that it'll curl or that it will get too soggy. And I don't want that to happen. I want this bee to be nice and flat. Once I get the amount on that I need, then I'll go back over a little more heavy handed over the entire piece of fabric with that Mod Podge. I'm going all the way over it and all the way around it. I like matte Mod Podge the best, but you know, you can use any, any type that you like. Certainly be okay. So we're going to remove the hanger and any tag that's on there. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to use this little spatula here that has seen better days. And I'm gonna gently, gently try to push these up underneath the legs, the wings, the body. You've gotta be super careful because the antenna, the wings, all that will break. So I decided since it's so fragile, let's go ahead and use some heat on it and not burn my hand. And then put the heat on there and then pull up on the frame while pushing down on the body of the bee. This removed it nicely with only leaving like one little splinter of wood on there that you'll see, but um, we can fix that, so that's no problem. Now, I wanna save the bee for another project, so I'm gonna put it aside. You see this little piece here? I'm just gonna scrape that off, and you could use the front or the back of it, whichever one that is in the best shape. You're gonna color that entire beehive in that same sunflower color. I'm going to go all the way around it. This was not the, breast, the best brush for this. I should have used a foam brush because I like the dimension of that the dark wood on the inside of the 
honeycomb. It gives it a little more depth. So, but you'll see how I fix that. Just be aware. Be careful with it. All right, the first cut I'm going to do on this bee is like a rough cut. I'm going to cut off as much of that negative space as I can cut off without fussy cutting. That's just going to get it out of the way and make it easier. I'm going to get some smaller scissors and start cutting around all of the legs, the wings, the antenna, all of that. And you can see how it's going to look. Here it is after it's all cut out. Now there are some places like around, you can see the white on the edges. I'm just going to cover that up. I don't like that white there. I, I want it to look more full and rich. So I'm just going to take this little marker. It has a brush tip on it. And I'm going to go all the way over the legs, the antenna, the wings, all of the areas that look like they are, they still have some white fabric around it. And then to make the wings stand out a little bit more, I'm just going right on the edge, on the side of that wing, just to give it some shadow and to make it look a little more noticeable because we're going to be putting this bee and his yellow wings against um, yellow hive and or yellow honeycomb and I want them to show. I don't want them to stand out. I want this bee to stand out. So if you did what I did and got a little bit of yellow on the inside, just go over it. I'm going to go over it very slowly with the side of this brush and it will neatly put the darkness back in those and give it a little more of a shadow. So I'm going to use some Jenga blocks here and I'm going to put them on the back side of the bee so that it stands up out from the hive or the honeycomb. That's a honeycomb. Okay, Brandy, it's a honeycomb. I got it. I got it, y'all. I think I got it now. I'm going to put these down on here. Once I got them glued down, figure out kind of where I want to place them. And then I am going to use some hot glue to put it down. So we're going to say that this bee is our drone bee or our worker bee. He works all the time. He works hard for the money. He's here, he's taking care of the honeycomb, and he is going to be gathering food and bringing it back to the rest of the bees in the colony, right? I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue on the back too, just to go across the frame to make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Let the glue dry completely. Now I'm going to take a little bunch of flowers, almost like a little bouquet. I'm going to cut off those little cheapy looking ends and just use a piece of jute and a little bit of glue to hold those pieces together. Now I'm using the glue here because some of the pieces had really um, short stems and I didn't want it to fall out. So that's why I use the glue. If all of your stems are long, you won't need to do that. I'm gonna wrap the top part around the top and then I'm gonna just wind that bottom part around the bottom part until all of that jute is glued down. Protect your fingers, y'all. I always say it and you're probably tired of hearing it, but I care enough about you. I don't want you to burn off your fingerprints. Okay, so now we're gonna go here, glue it down, and it shows you here that the bee has flowers where he's getting his food. We're gonna make a little bow. This is that simple bow. Really, really simple. You've seen me make it before. You probably don't want me to tell you how to do it again, but you can see how I'm doing it. And when you're making a bow this small, you could always use that method where you do it on a fork if you wanted to, but I found that this method works just fine. I just tied it with some jute. Now I'm gonna fluff. We always fluff. Doesn't matter how small the bow is, we're gonna fluff it. No flat bows in this house. Okay, so there's two different ways that you can hang this. Um, just two different ideas. I'm sure there are other ways that it can be done, but these are just two ideas that I thought of and I wanted to leave it in the video so that you could see that you do have options. So if you wanna cut these at a slant and put them on the back of the frame so that it's as wide, as wide as the frame, you can certainly do that, but you don't have to do that. I decided to just blunt the edges and just glue it in two little sections on the back that are a little bit closer inside rather than all the way to the outside. Just pressing that beautiful ribbon down. If I didn't mention it before, I think you can see that that ribbon came from Dollar Tree. Gorgeous, gorgeous ribbon. He's having a good life. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at five and it is completely free. Next is the bee and the pressed flowers.
This just might be my favorite. You tell me. So we're going to start off with this little stencil. This came from Timu. I am not sponsored by Timu, by the way. These dried flowers also from Timu. I have a variety of these. I love daisies. And we're going to take this little shape from the Dollar Tree. We're going to use a little bit of chalk paint and some acrylics and black and yellow and a variety of brushes and stencil brushes. Three different color greens. You're going to flip it over, pull off your tag, take, uh, pull off the hanger and then remove the tag. Look how satisfying it all came off in one piece. It's a miracle! It's a miracle! I'll take my miracles and blessings where I can get them. It's a big time saver. Okay, so I'm using my emery board here, and I'm going to go all the way over the board so that the texture, uh, the finished texture is all the same. So you can't even see where it was before, where the sticker was. And I noticed that my frame was coming apart a little bit, and I thought, hey, this is perfect. This is perfect. I'll take it off. It'll make it much easier to stain and to paint. So I'm using this oatmeal chalk paint. It's sort of a... Mmm, beigey greenish color. Love the color. Absolutely love it. And I'm just going to go all over the shape with this beautiful green. You can use any background color that you like. I think that for this project, the lighter color is going to work best, but you can certainly do whatever color you want. And you don't have to use chalk paint. You can use any paint that you like. But I wanted to use this color. So I'm going to use some Waverly Antiquing Wax and a damp baby white just like right out of the pack I'm gonna pat into there and we're gonna stain this frame in this dark color I think that staining these pieces really brings them up and really makes them look uh, more expensive and not to mention to me the richness of that dark wood is just it's pretty and it looks really good in a rustic house or um, if you like cottage core that sort of thing now I'm going back over this just with the little emery board again just to kind of sand it off a little bit and give it some scratchiness give it a little faint look of aging and then when you get done doing this it's really important that you wipe off the dust because it will muddy up any paint you put on there if you don't wipe that dust off get it off your table get it away from your brushes and get it off your project now the size of this is really perfect for this so I'm going to go ahead and place it down. I'm going to use some painter's tape. And this painter's tape just came from Dollar Tree. Inexpensive and it works perfectly fine for these projects. In my humble opinion. Why spend more when you can do a wonderful job with spending a little bit less, right? Because that's how we do it on this channel. We're budget friendly. We want to do it the best way we can for as cheap as we can. Okay. So now it's all taped down where I like it, and I'm going to use some Mod Podge and a little um, foam brush here. I'm just going to pounce that up and down all over this picture. I'm going around the greenery first. You'll see me do that, and then I'll go over the B. And this is my attempt to keep it from bleeding. Um, I've seen other people do the same color paint that they're going to do underneath to use that to seal it so it doesn't, you know bleed out but it's totally up to you which one you want to do after it's completely dry I'm going to go and pick out what colors I want to use so I've got my uh, this is jet black I believe and I know that I want the legs the antennas the head the arms to be this black color now if you have a stencil from wherever you get your stencils and it doesn't have any detail in it like this one doesn't really have any detailing or texture type detailing on it then you can certainly paint all of this one color. You could do all of it yellow. You could do all of it black. But I wanted to see what I could do if I tried to personalize it just a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing here. And y'all, this is, I'm learning too. This stencils is something that I've never really done that much with. But I'm learning. And there are so many ways you can use them. There's so many ways. Okay, so now that I've got all the black where I think I want it, I'm going to take that sunflower yellow and I'm going to go all over the wings. And then I'll go um, and make some stripes on the body of the bee. Now this is a representation of a bee. This is obviously not the exact bee. 
If you want to go back over and do a second layer on your golden yellow, you can certainly do that. See, I'm, now I'm adding in some little stripes to it. I'm just using my imagination kind of where I think that it would be and looking at the B fabric that I have over there. Now where I've got kind of a mess, because a foam brush is not a detail brush, I'm just going to go back in and clean it up just a little bit before I take, uh, before I finish the project and take it off. I want to just kind of clean it up a little, looking to see where I've got maybe some messy areas. And again, I'm just using my imagination because I really, there's no definition in that stencil to show me what color goes where or you know what a stripe should be or whatever okay so next we're going to go on to the green because i think i have wore out that description for y'all and i'm going to put three different colors of green they need to be not they need to kind of be a varied like some dark some light and such so that when you put them on your stencil brush and you stencil them down you get a variation of color that's what i was going for and i did my other project when i did my um, essential stencil uh, video and I used this on some flowers I did on a riser that I made and absolutely fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with it. So I would recommend that you do it this way if you like the look. And if you don't, that's okay. And if you don't have a large supply of paint with a variety of colors, that's okay too. Just use what you have. Okay, so now I'm going to peel it off. And you see part of the little leg came off, part of the little antenna came off. Am I going to be stressed about that? Absolutely not. Did I freak out for a moment in front of the camera? Absolutely. But then I thought, you know what? No, no. Because what I tell y'all, there's no wrong in crafting and we're going to fix it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back in with a smaller brush and I am just going to fix everything that needed to be fixed. I'm going back over with a second coat on that yellow to make it nice. Then I've taken almost every bit of the black paint off of the black brush, and I'm just gonna lightly dab this on to give it some kind of dotting and a little bit of texture. The Mod Podge that I put on underneath had already given it some texture, so this just gave it a little bit more. It's like the paint only clings to the high spots, and I love that look. You could probably do a little technique where you use the paint on the toothbrush and you flick it and you get little specks on there. That would probably be cute too. So now we could put the frame back in because we know we have the B picture finished. We're happy with the way it is for now. So I'm going to put some E6000 in the corners and use some hot glue just in a couple of areas and then quickly put that on before the glue dries. Now, the E6000 is going to take a while to dry, so if you don't want to use hot glue and you can't move that fast, that's okay. Just use your E6000 and give it plenty of time to dry. It fits back on there great. Don't put too much glue because it'll be bulky, and then your frames won't match up when you snap them back together. So just a little bit on this piece where they're going to touch on the side so they don't come apart. I'm going to squeeze them together and then let them dry. All right, so now I've got this little fine school glue brush. I'm going to add some dots of glue on top of the dots that are in this picture in the vines or the, um, the wreath form that's kind of around it. I'm going to add some of this glue and I'm going to put my little dry daisies on here. I didn't want to use hot glue because I wasn't really sure if it would be gentle enough for such a fine little leaf. Um, flower see how fine it is it just stuck to my finger they're so oh they're just they're so pretty they're so pretty it's a real dried flower it's not like a little fake something but hey if you don't have dried flowers go and get you a pack of stickers that will work perfectly as well I'm just gonna add these here and there where I feel like I like them and that glue if you let it dry it will hold it perfectly in place no worries about that. Perfectly in place. I love the look of that. And now we're going to add a little bow. Of course, you don't have to do this. You do not have to do it. I got two rolls of this honeycomb ribbon, and I really wanted to use it. So I'm going to try to use it up. And if you really enjoy these bee videos that I've done, please let me know in the comment section if you'd like to see more, because I have all kinds of ideas for bees, because I absolutely love them. 
So if you see something else, let me know and I will do it. See how easy it is to make this? And I'm just using the black in the middle, but that's because I had it right beside me. You can use jute, you can use whatever, because I'm going to be covering it up. I'm going to trim it off because we don't need to worry about that black. Twist that bow around. You can cut your tails as short as you like them. You can dovetail them or cut them at a slant. I like the slant, so I'm going to leave it for this project. And add some glue up there. And just add the bow right in the middle. I'm not even going to glue down the little tails. We're going to leave them because they don't flop around. They're real lightweight. So remember those bee stickers from Dollar Tree in the garden section? I'm going to pull off the little sticky part on the back because it's a foam and it's raised up. And I'm going to add some hot glue in the middle of the bow and press it straight down on top of it. I don't need a gap for this. I want it to be straight down. So we're going to use a little Jenga block, whatever size you have, or a little scrap piece of wood. And we're going to decide where we want to put it on the back and place this block on there. Now, I'm not holding it tightly in place. I'm pushing up with my fingers because you need it to be just slightly upward from the edge so that it will lean back slightly. Otherwise, it'll just keep tipping over. So when I was looking at it, I thought, you know what? I can do a little bit more because those wings are not standing out enough for me. I grabbed that same pin that I had before and the other end of it is like a really fine tip and you can see how fine it is and decided to make little dots. I didn't want anything as bold as a solid line, but again, you do you. If that's what you prefer, then you can go ahead and do that. But I thought these little bitty dots gave it just enough definition. So that's what I did all the way around both of these wings. And then I decided that I wanted to show the little deviation or the little separation between the sets of wings on the bee. So I just went right from, you know, the center part to where the edge of it is right there between. It's like a little dimple. And I just made my little lines go straight to that. That's all it is to it. I think that made a world of difference. Here are those three brand new bee projects. These all came from Dollar Tree supplies. These are all things that you can do yourself. If you're not near a Dollar Tree, then get creative. Gr grab some popsicle sticks, make your own. What can you do? What can you make with the supplies you already have at your house? Look around and see what you have. If you don't have those foam squares up there, you don't have to. Just cut that shape out with cardstock. You can do that. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you would subscribe. We're always doing budget-friendly, creative, unique DIYs on this channel. We always have lots of chatting in the comments section. I'm very appreciative of every one of y'all. Click on this little rectangle if you would like to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.